broadcast from the Vancouver Convention Center in British Columbia. Solutions Review is on location at the FME User Conference 2022, the peak of data integration. Brought to you by Safe Software. We are back at the FME User Conference 2022 in Vancouver here at the Convention Center and we are joined by our first SAFER. Hello. Chris Berger. How's it going? Going great. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Beautiful day. Well, I know you're a customer solution specialist yep. with SAFE, working um, with folks who are considering FME uh, early on. Uh, and I'm fascinated about that because, uh, because that's the part of engagements that I particularly enjoy, is, is when people are ultimately making the decision and what causes them to make a decision. and. And some of the things that you have to consider and think about. Um, so let's let's dig into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. First of all, what is a what is what is the customer solution specialist's role? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the customer solutions specialist role is essentially helping customers maximize the, their FME deployment. So we often use our catchphrase as helping customers maximize the value of your data, and we help to take that a little bit further by taking uh, the FME deployment to the next level for them. So. Well, and you've been doing it for a while, right? Yeah, coming up on five years. Five so, years, yeah, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so you've seen a lot, because from what I saw in the keynote earlier, Safe Software is booming, mm -hmm. uh, even through the pandemic, and, and maybe even because the pandemic, uh, it's even become even more, uh, more successful. Um, tell me a little bit about what you're seeing that's bringing people to consider uh, FME and safe software? Mm -hmm. I would say probably the need for standardizing data sets. So regardless if that is implementing like a state standard or just new standards, just as the keynote speaker Rick Hansen was talking about, that's kind of the need for having those standardized workflows and automations running behind the scenes. So you don't need to have these, these one-off workflows where someone's clicking a, a button and working through a desktop application. Just having things running behind the scenes uh, autonomously to do all those validations and standardize their, their data sets. And so when they come to you, um, where, where in the organization are you finding folks that are that are reaching out? Mm -hmm. It tends to start in the GIS department, but that's when that's really the initial uh, touch point. From there, it kind of expands. It could go into engineering, into planning, or finance. So, GIS teams are typically the the starting point for where we. Where and we is that where you're kind of adding the most value in terms of proofs of concept and so forth? Is they're looking for that kind of initial show us? Uh, the business case, I guess, so that they can start to sell it internally? Is that how it works? Definitely, yeah. So if it's a new customer, it would definitely start with the GIS de uh, department, and we'd be kind of finding their initial use case, and from there, say that it's a year or two down the line, that's when it'll expand to, oh, hey, we could actually use this to connect to something like JD Edwards or a different finance system like that. So that's where it starts to really evolve, and having those continuing continuous conversations really helps to expand the, the deployment in their organization. And, and so... I'm curious about because this solution just strikes me as, as as so next level. Not to not to sound like a hype man, but it really is next level. Um, over and above kind of what is a traditional data integration uh, solution. I'm assuming that a lot of these folks that are coming to you already have things that they've either built internally or some point solution that they've bought, and they haven't. They're they're realizing that moving to a more platform type solution um, is really where they need to go to that next level. Is that is that what you're finding? Definitely, yeah. There's there's definitely the, the historical like Python scripts or SQL scripts that uh, organizations kind of started with, um, and they're realizing there's the need to go to a platform like FME just because there is the hands-on training, the free aspect of it, uh, and you can kind of pass it off to a new employee should that one leave, and just to see how easy and flexible it can be with uh, either a data set or a different system and kind of bringing everything in together. So. Yeah, it's kind of your one-stop shop for all things data integration, which is a lot more flexible than a single SQL script or a single Python code for well, each individual application. Well, and it's—I mean, obviously, with the with the spatial elements, it's bringing in it's bringing in data sets that that other solutions just can't even deal with. Mm -hmm. So, 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 walk me through the process. Um, so, when do you get involved? How long are you involved? Um, and when do you? become no longer involved yeah. <laughs> 
preferably after they've purchased, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it, it really starts with, this, with the discovery calls. We'll, we'll hop on with our sales team, kind of find out what's, what's the need for their first use case. How do they really need to utilize FME or what's their current business challenge? From there, it depends on, depends on their needs. If they need us to be hands-on, that's when we'll pass it off to one of our partners who helps to do implementation with services, so that's where we take a back seat. If it's something that we can help coach them along with and they can implement themselves, take advice from our training, and we can kind of guide them along that path, that's where we'll kind of continue those conversations um, and we can be with them the entire journey as they uh, increase their deployment in the organization, so. Well, and so I, I want to dig into both of those things. So with regard to how long that process takes um, and and how many of those conversations do you have? I mean, I know every implementation is different, mm -hmm. obviously, and some are more complicated than others, but typically, um, from the time they engage to the time that you've kind of gotten some sort of test case or use case or business case or whatever it is, um, how long does that typically take? Yeah, it dep I would say it depends on the, the industry or the organization. Yeah. Um, obviously, resourcing is one of the main challenges. How much can someone take on the FME training themselves uh, versus do they need it to be more hands-on? I would say for an organization that's deploying FME for themselves and implementing their own project, their first project could be up and running depending on compl complexity within the first month. Within the first within month? Within the first month. Um, if it's something that is more complex and they need more hands-on training, having one of our, our fantastic service providers or our resellers kind of come in and do that for them, that could be up and running again in that same time frame depending on their, their availability. So. And so that's one of, the, one of the things that you're trying to determine as you're engaged with them is what they need in terms of not only licensing but support going forward? Exactly, yeah. And so. that determines whether or not you introduce them to a value-added reseller yeah. partner? Partner, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really depends on their level of, their level of not hand-holding, but um, assistance when uh, implementing their, their project. So if they want well, to be more hands-off, that's right. when the service provider I mean, I think it's in. probably, uh, it's also a matter of just their capacity for implementing projects. Exactly. Everyone has a lot of work going on, and we totally understand that, so we need to know kind of what's our, our threshold for how much we can help before we'd be overstepping that. Well, and uh, you know, I yeah. mean, there, you have a lot of partners at this conference. Yeah. I mean, we see a lot of partners with all the solutions we cover, and there's a reason for that, because that value-added reseller is appropriately named, because they do bring all that um, that capacity and expertise. I Definitely. mean, uh, just the years of, of uh, implementing other clients and so forth. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that's what you bring to the table as well. You've probably seen, I don't know, God only knows how many, <laughs> how many implementations you've you've seen. Yeah, in, across in, various industries. But that's that's also another reason why our partners are so val valuable to us is that they have the direct industry relevance. Whereas we don't necessarily have that all the time because we're spanning across all industries. So yeah, I've uh, kind of been been around the block with all industries and different types of organizations. Well, so, well, so again, I, I, I'm curious about that. Um, where are you seeing traction in terms of industry type? Is, I, I know what we've been learning is that um, it tends to be um, more, I guess, not necessarily sophisticated, but more complex with regard to infrastructure and other mm -hmm. spatial, obviously spatial data sources. Um, so utilities, governments, is that, is that what you're seeing? Yeah, well? definitely. I would say, yeah, utilities is a big one. Uh, government, whether that's state or local, federal, um, we're kind of all over the place when it comes to uh, the industries that we play in. So. And so we're, uh, some, what are some of the others that, that you see? Yeah, also airports are a pretty big one. Um, yeah. Yeah, depending on the utility, if it's a gas or electrical a utility, that would kind of depend on th their use case there. And I'm trying to think what would another one would be. Well, i got to believe there's uh, governments at all levels. Yeah. Right? You're probably talking about City, all county, kinds state. of, yeah. yeah. And, and some of them are probably, I'm, I'm sure it's very much uh, driven by the, uh, by the managers of, the, uh, of these data uh, architectures, but some must be more sophisticated than others, yes? Uh, yeah. Some of these organizations are really looking for the next level of, uh, of solution. Definitely. Yeah, I would say it depends on how big their, their uh, whether it's a county, a city, or a state, depending on how big of the service area they have, that's where it really depends on how complex their teams can be, how complex their challenges could be. If you're working with um, a bunch of, uh, one county with a bunch of cities that they have to support, it could be a lot more complex than a single city supporting just their own solution. So. 
And so, roughly speaking, um, to get back to the to the, I'm just buying licenses, or I need a full uh, partner engagement. Where do you see that breakdown in terms of the engagements that you kind of bring through the process? I mean, do you have a sense for how many just are looking for straight up licensing and then how many are looking for that kind of next layer of support? I'm actually not sure what the answer for that one would be. That would okay. be more on the sales <laughs> side, but that is, that's a really good question. Um, we, we deal mainly with customers in North America, so um, Kind of, kind of hard to gauge. Do they, do for they the even let base. you know it early on like that? I mean, are they? Oh yeah. Do they, does, does the prospect typically let you know? Definitely. Yeah, they're they're very upfront, and we're very upfront with what we can offer too, because we don't want to overcommit to something that we know we can't deliver. So we know we have fantastic partners that can uh, deliver these services and implementations. So. And so, how do, how does the partner get brought in? Is that driven by the sales team? Is yeah, that, driven by the sales team. And we is have, it regional? Is it? Uh, it's vertical? kind of broken, yeah, broken down by vertical as well as region. So we want uh, the customer to be in a time zone that is in the same one as the customer because we don't want to pass someone off from like a different day kind of thing. Uh, we want them to be able to work alongside the team. And I'm assuming there's with. a lot of partners. Yes. Yeah, That's I think, good. I don't know what the official count is, but I think we're getting close to 200 now. Is that right? Yeah. 200? Yeah. Holy smoke. 200 across the, across the globe. We've always used 150 plus on our... Uh, on our side deck, but I'm pretty sure in our sales force we have a little bit uh, kind of approaching 200. Well, so. it's, a, it's an amazing story and it's, uh, and it's been an amazing, uh, an amazing journey for Safe Software and, and the FME story in particular. Uh, and so congratulations on, uh, on being with such a fine organization and, yeah. and uh, it sounds like you're, uh, you're doing well with your career path. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've, been, I've loved my time here at Safe. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't go back for anything in the world. So. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, well, well done. Thanks for coming by and, uh, and sharing that. I always find this stuff fascinating. Uh, have a great rest of the show and a great rest of the year. Awesome. Thanks so much. You too. Thanks, Chris.